Ian. Dave. Apex Adjacent, greatest automotive podcast in the known universe. Thus and so, thus and so, yes. Yes. Um, also, I should say it is a automotive podcast where we have never shied away from discussing men's health, Ian, and our pro vasectomy stance. Okay, yes. I mean, correct? You No, know, yes, I'm just, I'm sorry, <laughs> you... You wrote in the talk about, oh boy, do I have an opener? And then now we're talking about vasectomy. So now I'm, I'm you could excuse me for being slightly on my guard because I don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> Ian, I had two insanely uncomfortable experiences today. Oh no. Okay. What, what is right, this, I'm not making any of this up. This is not for a joke or anything like that. Um, I have had a couple little kind of health things come up in the past, like couple, like a few things have kind of been getting worse over the last couple of years, right? This is not a bit, right? No, okay. Uh, but it, it, um, motivated me to kind of put a couple kind of connective, uh, doctor's visits together, right? Check some stuff out. Everything is okay. Everything is all right. I'm okay. Okay. okay? Okay, good. Um, you know, but I have to say, um, I, one of the uncomfortable, posi- one of the uncomfortable things that I experienced today, um, compared to the other one, I just, w- let me start with the lesser one. Okay? okay. All right. I had a stranger's finger inside my anus. Ooh. Okay. Now was how how long before or after your doctor's visit was <laughs> so i was behind a burger king <laughs> <laughs> and okay. a guy in a van said hey <laughs> yes. if you want some taffy you gotta pay <laughs> <laughs> no i i had my first prostate exam of my life today it okay. was incredibly uncomfortable um but i do also want to co- my my wife was like Oh, like, I feel so bad for you, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, first of all, are you kidding me? Like, what a man has to deal with, with, like, one person putting one finger one place does not even compare to anything a woman has to deal with on a monthly basis or anything with exams, okay? Nobody's coming at me with an ice-cold speculum, right? Yeah, okay? So, this this is not a big complaint. It was uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Did not enjoy it. This is the lesser of the two uncomfortable things today. Okay. Okay. All right. The more uncomfortable one, Ian. I mean, I think I'm experiencing the more uncomfortable one right now. I, Ian, I don't know. The, the second one, I saw a Tesla Cybertruck today. Uh, <laughs> I did too. You that was going to be too. my thing. You did too. So we both got, we both got anally probed today. We both, we both were (laughs) violated today. Ian, we were both fucking violated today. I did too. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Can we, yes. Let's talk about this because I not only saw, I don't know if there's like an influencer in Denver who has one or some shit, but it, I saw it very briefly. I didn't have time to get a picture. Yeah. Me neither. I was, I had just picked up my kids from school. And so okay. it was like up in that neighborhood in downtown. And there was four young men getting into it. Oh, it okay. was street parked. And they all looked like they would definitely corner you at a party to talk about crypto. Like, right. It, yes. It was four of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Four mini Jordan's Petersons. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Or Andrew's um, Tate's. Yes, platinum members of the Joe Rogan podcast. Yes, yes, whatever okay. club. Yeah, yes, <laughs> club. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah, but it's so funny that you yeah. saw one. T- I wonder if it was the same one. I yeah, I don't know. It was probably around six p.m. today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In, Mine was a couple hours earlier. Yeah. Yeah, so like twenty been. miles north of of you. So it's completely possible. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah. And I would have taken the first thing 30 times over instead of seeing the <laughs> Tesla Cybertruck. Well, I was going to say, 
I thought it was going to look more bizarre in sort of the world than it did. And it, I don't know. It just looks a little weird. Uh, yeah. I, I think that that I can I had a similar take. I think that first of all, I think it looks dumb in person. I just think it looks dumb. And I think that like, if it had a, like a, a weird, like scale to it where it was like really big, like uncomfortably big, like yeah. my physician's hands. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's nothing more humbling as a 46 year old man than, um, just having to do that in front of a, a, I'm going to say 30 ish year old woman, you know? Mm. Yeah. But you know, Hey, you know, your health is important. You can't, you can't let shit go folks. Yeah. So I'm sorry. So I'm, yeah. I, I, I want to talk about the cyber truck. Okay. Yeah. But, but first my prostate. Yeah. First your prostate. Sure. <laughs> Is everything okay? Yes. A hundred percent. Like not a bit. Everything is okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Everything is solidly okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Not a bit, okay. you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, yeah. I, Elon Musk is enough of, di- of a distraction. Yes. I don't want to yeah. also get distracted from my friends. No, well-being. no, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we've had some fucked up health stuff kind of happen in our orbit here in the neighborhood. Uh, mm. yeah, um, you know, someone that lives uh, close to us passed away suddenly, super young, stroke. Um, and then uh, someone just uh, across the street from them, um, de- on the younger side too, um, uh, super aggressive case of prostate cancer. And so, you know, like... E- you know, if you, you know, I'm like, I'm, t- I'm too young. I'm 46 some odd years. I, I'm 46 and you should start getting prostate exams at 50. Um, yeah. but I think that I had some symptoms that led me towards, uh, being like, well, on the off chance, something's not right. I like, I'm not letting my tuchus take me out, you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, good on you for, for getting that figured out. Well, I I think that it's really important that people feel like that they are worth having themselves checked out, right? That it is Mm -hmm. that like you would be doing yourself and everyone that loves you a disservice if you didn't do something like that. And so peace of mind is, is hard to come by in these times. And so not every diagnosis or or exam and stuff like that is going to turn out the way you want it to, but I'm thankful that this one or this series and this, you know, setting did. So, yeah. Good. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in less good news, <laughs> let's, talk, let's go back to the cyber truck. Yeah. I, th- I, I think like the- we're, we're, we're just like just massive tonal shifts between cyber truck and prostate exams. I think maybe not that massive. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's a, I like, I like what you've done here. Yeah. <laughs> to draw a parallel did, between the two. Did I live up to the all caps lock uh, opener I typed? Yeah. Okay. Very funny. Good. Okay. I love. I love it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will love say that we so, both saw it on the same day. That's fucking serendipitous. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Um. Also, uh, Nico, my nine-year-old, who yes, uh, I've talked about before. Um, he had a take about it because oh, he's very, okay, he's very yeah. into cars and he saw it. Okay. And he. I was like, oh, hey, a Cybertruck. And uh-huh. I don't think I've talked to him much about the Cybertruck. Right, right. Or really like put tried spin to... on the ball, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And his take was, because then we drove, we, were dri- we drove up to REI to go. We were buying his younger brother a birthday present. Okay. And um, um, we got to REI and there was a Lucid there. And he's a oh, big fan yeah. of Lucids. Yeah. Um. And so we we walked by the Lucid, and he was like, "Oh man, Lucids are so cool." I was like, "Yeah, yeah I know they really are cool cars." Yeah, and he was like, "I think the Cybertruck is trying to be cool." Oh damn! And the Lucid is cool, and I was like, "That is excellent." <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that was my, that's my nine year olds, and I feel like. Nine-year-olds are kind of the cyber trucks, like that's kind of their core demographic, right? That's, oh, I mean, that's who yeah. they're right targeting that at. Essentially. Yeah, 
Yeah, mentally, um, like Elon's like, you know, man child that he has in his head, right? Right. Yeah, that yeah. he tries to satiate by doing dumb shit like this, right? Yeah. You know. But again, not a bit. My 9-year-old was like, yeah. I think the Cybertruck is trying too hard. I love that. And the Lucid is just cool. That that stings more than any automotive journalist could ever right? like ever subject their like marketing and design to to. Absolutely. Right? right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I don't care what Camisa Farah or same yeah. same level Apex adjacent has to say about this. <laughs> Right, but fucking nine year olds are lighting us up on whatever social media that they're allowed to be on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's called Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's Minecraft or Roblox. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, they're just all griefing the person that made like a, a Cybertruck mod and is tootling around in it. Yeah, right. Yeah, just uh -huh. devastating. Right. Oh my god. Take take down. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fatality. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I, it just like you instantly Did you see knew, it driving around yes, or was it parked yes, or I what, saw it moving. It? I saw it. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was facing South at a stoplight. I was stopped. It went uh, from East to West in the lane closest to me. I think I was only one car back in the stoplight, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I had a good view, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I don't know. Like, it's just like you see it and you're like, Yep, that's a cyber truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little underwhelming, I think. Yeah. I was uh, kind of expecting like a bigger reaction viscerally. Like I thought I was going to either be like, oh, actually, that's cool as shit. Or, right. Yeah. And no. I didn't feel either of those things. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're. I think that you're right. I think that it is that effect of, um, since we have kind of just perceived it through the lens of like, other people doing YouTube reviews and stuff like that, um, that we have, uh, that it seems like one of those things where like, if you meet an actor and, and they're like way shorter than you thought that they mm. would be mm -hmm. because on screen, they have such a big presence. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I think it's kind of like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah right. Good way like, to put that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The only like, very famous person I've ever been in the presence of. I didn't even talk to them was John Lithgow. And like, he's six foot four. Like he's as tall as I am. Like he's a big dude. Yeah. So it was like, he lived up to like what you see on like the TV. So mm -hmm. I haven't had that experience with anybody else, you know? Yeah. 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 But yeah. Yeah. Like you saw Todd Berry, but we all know Todd Berry is a small man, <laughs> you know? Well, and he was sitting yeah yeah right yeah he there was you sitting go down exactly right yeah yeah i haven't had very many celebrity um encounters right? yeah yeah Only right yeah. yeah yeah but it seems it seems like that thing where like you almost just feel kind of like it's hard to feel anything like less than kind of like not necessarily deceived but just like like that it's just kind of a miss right i think i felt more like huh yeah, yeah. 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 There's that thing that I've been having to think about for the last yep. however long. Yeah, that know? was thrust upon us. Yeah. It's not even that like I'm just like exhausted by it at this point. You mm -hmm. know, like it's just yeah. I'm just tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I get it. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Whereas the first time I saw like a GR Corolla, I was like, oh fuck. You Dude, know? I saw one of those today too. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I think it might be my first GR Corolla in the wild sighting. Yeah. I've seen a couple, and yeah, I'm always like, wait, is that a? Is it? Yeah, you and look then, at like the the little thing on the side, yeah, and the exhaust, yeah, and the exhaust, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you're right. Yeah, where like when you see it, you feel like you're seeing something special. And I think, well, we, I think part of it is that you, it's a thing that is a secret for you because you know that yes. nobody else, everyone else around you sees right. a Corolla, right. you know, or just a normal hatchback or whatever they right. see. Right. But people and, tuned into the frequency, right? Right. And you yeah. know that you've spotted something that not everybody else knows about. Right. That's a, that's not nothing, right? That's right. 
that's something. And uh, but Cybertruck is just like, God, right? Look at me. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so actually, Nico's sort of like, he's spot he's on. He's kind of spot. He's kind of, he kind of nailed it, right? He, not kind. Yeah. Remove kind of. I'm going to suggest yeah. one edit to that sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is very look at me, right? Mm-hmm. It's a little yeah. try hard, yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, fits with that whole ethos of yep. Elon reply guy and yep. all that. Right? So, yeah. They are try hards. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I Yeah. Wild. You, you know, there was something else that I saw. A, a few days ago. And I was wondering if I could get your take on it. Um, hmm. I don't know if you've seen one of these in person or not, but I would, I would really be interested in seeing uh, what you, what you thought about it. If you've seen one, et cetera. So let me go ahead and pull up um, our folder here. And let me just show you what I saw on the street the other day. This is while I was driving down uh, I 25, not too far away from where you are. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen one of those in person yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about which one you talk about the, oh, well, this is a great <laughs> two car garage, to be honest. Yeah. So tell the audio noticed. only people what you see here. Yeah. So there's, there's a reason a, it's cropped this way. I will say. Okay. So there's a Maserati. What's the name of this? MC20. That? MC20. Yeah. Which is unbelievably cool. Yeah. Um, Mid engine supercar whatever yep. but then there's also an old audi a8 i yeah, believe the 4.2 right? i think that what the, what was this one called the d1 audi a8 yeah like that was the uh, model designation yeah, i think that's right but yeah d1, d1 audi a8. yeah d1 think? or d2 yeah yeah it might be d2 yeah uh but still oh yeah it is a d2 yep it's a d2 yeah super cool one Those of the cr- big old Audis are right. just they age so well. They look great. Right? Man. Like this I still is everything. Don't love those wheels. Yeah, I like the multi spokes that came with them. Like it, mm-hmm. I think towards the turn of the century. Yeah. 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 Right? But those cars look so good, especially when they're clean like that. Right? Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's very But as a two car garage. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of it right it there, is, right? Right? Yeah. You got yeah. all wheel drive and space for the family and then your your fun supercar. Like that's a classy ass two car garage right there. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know anything uh, stats wise about the MC20? Uh, not the a Maserati. ton. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, I, carbon should, fiber tub. Yep. Uh, V6, right? Yep. Yeah. 3.2 um, liter V6 or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it costs $240,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super, yeah. super cool. It looks amazing from the front. I had it in my rear view mirror for a while and it was cool to see. Like I, when I started rolling up on it, I was like, am I seeing a Porsche 918? Like for the first time in my life. Oh, Right. A little bit of that, but like that, as I can, yeah, I see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. It wasn't just the, um, Fiat exhaust gas leak. That was, <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I was in Luther. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's got, uh, like scissor doors. Yeah. The Maserati MC 20. Yeah. It's got 621 horsepower, three liter V six. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The coupe starts at 240,000. It looks really good in white as well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, which is what I saw it in. Yeah. Yeah, right? And the tax dodging Montana plates. It does. It does. Yeah. And yeah. Peter and I were just talking about Audi A8s a little bit ago because we were talking about a potential car to replace Luther. And he was like, why not A8? And I was like, A8s are amazing cars. I would just be so worried about like what I'd have to maintain on it. Like, for sure yeah the reason lexus is the answer in that space is because there's so much i just don't have to think about yeah you know yeah, yeah absolutely yeah no i don't have amazing little bang and olsen tweeters that pop up out of the dash when i start the car right but that don't the, work <laughs> yeah but the car starts <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, no, A8s enough. are amazing. Yeah, I would, I would love I think, to have one as like. Are a you fun thinking about sedan. replacing? 
Are you replacing Luther? I think I am. I'm thinking maybe I'll replace Luther in a, in a few years with just another Lexus LS. I honestly think that I'm just going like for my, for my daily, I think I'm just an LS guy now. What about, Oh, okay. Let me hear the Ian take. Okay. As I fancily adjust my glasses. What about a Toyota Sentry? Yeah. Yeah. That has been like something I have actually thought about. More luxurious. Right. Right. And still all the Toyota. And still all the Toyota. Yeah. I I have actually thought about that. I've looked at crowns and centuries. Mm-hmm. I have actually looked them up online. So my, my browser history is full of purple links for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the, what, what, what's the worry with that? Is it like transmission? I, th- is it's like that weird, like three speed. Yeah. Mass transmission. I, I think that I only want <clears throat> more features as I kind of move through cars. Right. So mm-hmm. um, as much as I loved my infinity, m45 the 2006 it did not have like passenger lumbar adjustment right right and so like one of the things about wouldn't the century have that sort of stuff maybe i don't know but like but just kind of like you know hear me out right like so um my next kind of set of requirements now that i have like that uh, passenger seat adjustability is i want passenger seat memory Right. Like I want saved positions for the passenger seat as well. Um, Radar cruise control, you know, like I I want like kind of this escalating set of features that I've kind of slowly wanted more and more of over time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I I think I've been thinking about this a lot because of that. The thing we talked about last week, which was the New York Times or a couple weeks ago. Yes. Yes. The New York Times Nexus stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe I have bought the newest car that I will buy. You might ever buy in your entire life, right? Unless, I mean, I'm, I'll probably get well, next car, next family car will be an electric car. But for me, my yes. my car, yeah, I have a 2004. I don't think I'm ever going to own anything newer than that. Yeah, I, th- I think you have some movement into like that 2008 to 12-ish space. But not you know, much past that. Before, I mean, yeah, like before cellular modems were connected all the time, you yeah. know? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to opt out of that because I think I can. Yeah. No. So it, I'm not, not yeah, look, I'm not going to talk you out of that. Jesus, are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. I think, I think if anything, I'm going to go backwards. Yeah. And if anything, I think it kind of motivates like maybe you and I to kind of like collaborate on a build for you as your next fun car see now we're talking right because i mean like maybe like let's say like i don't know maybe like a like an ls swapped porsche that you got you know like or like a porsche with a blown engine Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm, like and mm -hmm. you know a lot of people make kits for like ls swapping something like or an ls swap third gen rx7 right Yes, or an RX-8, honestly. An RX-8 with an LS in it. I saw one of those at High Plains, Yeah, and I have been thinking about it ever since. Yeah, so I I think that I would would be so thrilled for you and I to kind of like work together on a build or something like that for your next like fun car. Well, I appreciate you volunteering your garage space Uh for three to five months. Oh, no, we're talking probably a year. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) like three to five months. You remember that I got the I got the nugget in August and that was Uh just a head up rebuild. And it took me until December to get it running. Yeah. 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 Your HOA is going to love us. You know, I honestly, Ian, I would, I would be over the moon to do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Because then in the meantime, um, like in this neighborhood, it, it's, it sucks, but like, we don't want, we, my wife and I, we don't want any like cars on the street or in the driveway, like overnight. Right. We just, mm-hmm. that's just us. Right. Like if somebody stays for a night, totally cool. Like that kind of stuff, but like ongoing, uh, you know, um, 
so the 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 thing is you like my nugget would have to be your shop loaner right oh you know yeah interesting okay yeah right or whatever i have at the time i which i assume is a nugget with probably a dodge dart motor inside of it (laughs) (laughs) which is exactly the same yeah 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 you know but yeah i would i would i would love to do something like that yeah yeah. Okay. So well, keep that in been, your back uh, Hypotheticals with Dave and Ian. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then for your next family car, you let, you have to let me build you a bagged B7, um, uh, Passat. Yeah. A B7.5. <laughs> Cause remember like what, like maybe six months ago, I learned everything I could about bagged Passats. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why I just got a weird just a bout of insomnia. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, fly in the Vaseline that I had to, yeah, just really yeah. dig into that. Yeah. That's yep. Funny. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, yeah. But anyway. Yeah. I don't mean to move you along from no, no, no. this yeah. topic, which we've already moved way far from. But yeah. What what it, what is this on the thing? Because I'm very curious to know what I was right about. Um, yeah. Because I'm seldom correct, so I, I want to know what I was right about. The, Dave wrote on the agenda for tonight. Ian was right! Exclamation point. Ian was fucking right all along! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! God damn it! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Yep. Yep. So, so, Ian, would you mind giving out? I love leaving you cryptic notes in the talk about as like <laughs> our form of like bullet points. Um, yeah. Uh, the mystery's still alive, everybody. Eight years <laughs> in. We're keeping it fresh. Yeah. Don't even need to bring in a third. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian... Give for anybody who doesn't know, and this this very well may be somebody's first episode, especially because of something we're going to talk about later in the show. But this very well may be somebody's first episode for first time listeners that have made it through all the butt stuff talk. um, (laughs) uh, Would you mind telling people your kind of general view of the world and humanity at large? I mean, what? How long do I have? No, it's um, something you say all the time, right? Like, like oh, the, when we oh, talked about the, the Tesla. Things are, things are dumb and getting dumber. Uh-huh. That, that, yep. that, that we have like societal entropy. And if you don't input like leadership into it, that it will just become dumb and become dumber. And not, not even meaning that people are getting dumb. Like, not right. like that. That like, our scandals are getting dumber, right? The outcomes, like, the, the things that yes. we perceive, right? The results of people's actions, right? Like things that we have solutions for, right? Readily available. We're just ignoring, which right. is the dumbest possible thing you can do. Right. 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 Um, so that's what I mean by things are dumb and getting dumb is that we are just, we have tools available. We have lots of tools available and we just don't use them. Right. Um, for the dumbest possible reasons. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I think about it often. I think about it often. And I thought about it today because I saw a vanity plate that our dear, dear friend Jesse sent us. And mm. she was like, there's no way this could be a real vanity plate. There's no way. Please tell me it's not real. And so, Ian, I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to share it with the listeners. Nope, that's not it. Don't look, Ian. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. It's this one. Here you go. Here you go. It's this one here. Okay. This is a Corvette with a vanity plate that says... (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, I'm away TFYB to F your boy. Yeah, it's on my way to fuck you, bitch. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's internet slang for saying that you're going to have sex with someone's uh, spouse. Okay. And of course, it's on a black C5 Corvette. I also want to point out Uh on this 
is the Z fifty one Z S one, which is, is not a real one? thing. Yeah, which I don't think is, is a real it not, thing. Well, they did make a Z fifty one package. It looks There's like Z fifty one package. I mean, I think this says Z S one. That's an S. Yeah. That's not a real thing. Yeah. And it, they are definitely trying to represent like a Z06 or a ZR1. Uh, but that is not a real thing. The Z51 package, 51 package is a real thing. Right. Chevy Camaro or yeah, Chevy Camaro. What? No, this is oh, fucking Pinterest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. CS1. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the ZS1 is a real thing. I mean, we could be wrong, but yeah. But that, I mean, it could be. That says ZS1. I mean, yeah. I don't think that's. That doesn't look like a five to me. It's close, but it looks more like a letter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, Ian, I have news for you. In that you are right. You are fucking right. Of course you are. God damn it. Because, yes, things are getting dumber. And I have proof, Ian. I have proof. Okay? Okay. Besides this plate, right? Mm -hmm. I think that we have seen a whole lot of very dumb vanity plates where we're like, how the fuck did that get through the DMV? Right? I think a lot of our listeners that send us plates, like I know our buddy Eric and a lot of other folks are like, how the fuck did this get through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, I'd like to tell everybody, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. Yes, it is getting dumber. Turns out that in October of 2023, in Maine, an individual was denied a vanity plate, decided to sue, saying that they were, take the DMV to court, saying that they were impeding the person's um, free speech. Okay. The federal, a federal judge ruled in their favor. Uh, and so I think that a lot of municipalities, DMVs, et cetera, are now kind of gun shy from uh, worrying that they're going to get caught up in litigation if they deny a plate. So I think that this has kind of opened the floodgates for some things getting through. <laughs> I am not unsympathetic to that argument. Right of, of of free speech. I, honestly, I think the idea of vanity plates in particular are just. I don't know why. Like, it seems unnecessary. Like, we yeah. it feels like we could just sidestep this whole First Amendment issue by just not doing it. Right. Um. But what was the? What was? Oh, what I was know. It about I know what the plate was, Ian. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me pull it up here. Um. I think the ACLU had a uh, article on it. Um, let's see here. No, nope. it was from 2003. I know. Um, 23, 2023. Yeah. 2023. Yeah. I saw it on the ACLU's website. Let me see if my history sinks. I don't think it does. Yeah. Now we're getting into weird stuff. My history. <laughs> no, it tabs from other devices. No, it's because I don't sync tabs between devices. That always seemed like a weird thing to do. Um, Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So it was on the ACLU's website. It was an individual that had an electric vehicle and they claimed they were an environmental enthusiast and the license plate said FK gas, like fuck gas. Mm. They said that when they were plugging their, their car into the wall, their small child said, you know, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, we're charging it with electricity instead of gas. She's like, oh, it's like fake gas. And so he says that the license plate means fake gas, which you could have probably just spelled fake gas. Um, and he agrees that it could be interpreted as fuck gas. But this is this is a real thing that happened. And a federal judge ruled in his favor that he gets to keep the plate for the time being. So, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that the... U.S. court system was used for such see right important work right, but I mean that's sort of I don't know that's sort of what it is right like that's what uh, 
constitutional questions come down to. It's just right. dumb shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah, this is uh this is the article. I can put it in the uh YouTube description if anybody wants to lose some brain cells. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So uh, maybe that no, this is not the right article. Yeah. But well, yeah, I'm I'm of two minds of this because I am yeah. I, I I very much am more sure. of a free speech absolutist than I think is fashionable on in our sort of political cir- political circles these days. Sure, um, but there's yelling fire in a crowded theater, which this is not, right? Right. 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 Yeah. Um but also, yeah. No, you're right. It's dumb. Right. 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 And so like through the federal court system, we're learning from how many thousands of miles away that we don't want to be friends with this person. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Because if they just had a normal license plate or it was denied and they had some other kind of thing, we would know that we hate this person to our very core, but we do now. Right. It's the equivalent of, of of really thinking you have a clever joke so repeating it over and over again but yeah. then also having the resources to take it to the supreme court <laughs> yes yes because when a dave letterman bit would die on the table that's what he would usually do right yeah right uh, yeah. number six on the top 10 list not working this evening let's say it 400 more times yes right yes but but he yeah he's the only person who can get away with that right right yeah Everybody else, if you take it to the Supreme Court, it's fucking insufferable. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so Ian, you are, this is now evidence based journalism. You had we have legitimate outcomes that show that just things are dumber. Yeah, I accept everybody's apology. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, yeah. And if it's your first show, welcome. Yeah. yeah. If you Hello. see dumb vanity plates, you can text us, text them to us at 720-515-1391. We'll put them in a license plate game that we won't play on the Absolutely. show tonight, but yeah, yeah. Li- listen to some others. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? You know, uh, let's see here. So I have, um, I have a slightly lesser dumb thing um, mm-hmm. uh, that our buddy Eric saw uh, just real quick. Uh, it is a Kia Stinger, not a dumb car, right? I think the Kia Stingers are, they like, there's like m- mom plates, there's religious plates. Kia Stinger plates are like their own kind of like thing. This, you can't see the plate on this, but there is a thing about this car that you may have noticed, Ian. Oh, I've noticed. Yeah. And I'm unhappy about it. Right. I'm Ian. guessing it's the extra chrome. Well, there is that weird little extra chrome kicker that they're trying to kind of ape an M5, right? Yeah, which yeah. I don't appreciate because I don't believe these ever came with chrome. Accents. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've seen that mod. Yeah, before. Maybe they did come with chrome accents. I don't know. I've never yeah. seen one. It's very out of it place. Looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. It looks like you just like it looks like the rest of the chrome part either fell off or that's the only part that you could find. It looks yeah. weird. It does, yeah. I don't care for that. Yeah, very incomplete. But there yeah. is something about this car that with some zoomies and enhances and thanks to Eric. A is it this weird picture. badge on the side? What, yeah. What am I looking yeah. At? yeah, the weird badge on the side. Does that uh, that shape kind of give you any echoes of like anything? It looks out of place is all like I maybe it should be on a GM product instead. Oh my god, is that from is that from a Corvette? Nope. Worse, I'd say. Okay, there's there's Zoomy one. Uh huh. And here's Zoomy two, Ian. It's a grand. Na- it's a Buick Grand National yeah, badge. It is. It's a grand. At first, I thought badge. it was a Stingray badge because for a while, GM yeah. had the 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 manta ray yeah. Stingray badge. Yeah. But then you did that first zoom, and I saw the little arrow uh-huh. and, and twirly turbo guy. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit! Yep. Somebody actually did it. Somebody did it. That folks. is hilarious. Yep. I mean, it 
it's sort of a modern day Grand National. V6 turbocharged squint. four door. Sure. Uh huh. Yeah. But I think that this is that that thing where like we saw that Honda Type R badge on a Hyundai Genesis uh, coupe. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? Like you have a cool ass car already. Well, yes. Right. Yes. And, and again, who is that for? Like Exactly. Who thinks that a Korean automaker <laughs> has something called the Grand National? Right. Right. Who doesn't already know what a Grand National is like? Yeah. What? The only thing that I think is worth it about this, like Kia Stinger with a Grand Nat badge on the side, is that you'd be able to roll into like a muscle car show and piss the fuck out of some wing a <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Well, and what's really funny about that, what's really <laughs> funny about that is that the, my first thought when I saw that the chrome, that fake ass uh-huh. chrome, uh uh looking vent is yeah. that i thought it looked like a buick it looks that's a very oh, okay yeah just like weird chrome in weird places yeah yes that, yeah and fake looking chrome yeah like that's a very modern buick you could see that on a regal right yeah like yeah from the factory Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You see it on a lacrosse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? It looks like a, it looks like a piece of Buick Chrome. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. That is hilarious. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I do feel like I have seen some Kia Stingers with some questionable badging and all that right. sort of stuff. Yep. Yep. And I think that Kia Stinger owners have a weird chip on their shoulders about like, I think they think that their car doesn't get enough respect, which I think is correct. I do think that's correct as well. I think it's an underrated and overlooked vehicle. Yes. For yes. sure. Yes. Um, I mean, it's not like spectacular or anything, but like it's not terrible and it's kind of cool for what it is. It, it's the it's the only car we've ever driven at any press event that gave me Vigan vibes. Ever. It does have Vigan vibes. Yes. Right. It does. I, w- I wish. Lag to the boost. Yeah. I wish the suspension was a little better. Yes, definitely. There is that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's a great car. It's yeah. a great car. And I but I do feel like the owners are a little like it's like, and I've made this analogy before on the show, but like when I lived in Oklahoma, people would go real out of their way to tell me great things about Oklahoma. Yes. To where they would have to qualify. Like yes. I remember there was one thing where somebody told me that they had the most coastline of any state in the U S <laughs> and it's like, well, that's clearly not true. Right. Right. And it turned out it was like man-made coastline. Right. Right. And with like four other qualifiers. Yeah. Within a know? park system governed by municipalities by people right. named Brian. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. On a Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And you're like, well, just just own what you have. Right. We have a lot of cool reservoirs is a different is a better way to say that. Or right? like, yeah, we've done lots of cool engineering projects or whatever. Right. Like there are right. cool ways to own the thing that you have. Right, right. Without trying too hard, which is again going yeah. back to the Cybertruck. Right. Right. My nine year old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which I think we we could just really just sum up this whole show as in <laughs> As just trying too hard. Yeah. 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 Yep. So so there you go. There's the grand national Kia Stinger, but you're, you're right. I think that it it's the Kia Stinger. I don't know if it's middle child or youngest child kind of energy where like they have something to prove. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's like, just calm down. You're right. Yeah. You're awesome. Yeah. 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 This makes it worse. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Trying to trying to dress it up, trying to zhuzh it up is yeah. uh is worse. Like mm-hmm. when I see a Kia, Kia Stinger, I'm like, "Oh, cool. That's a that's a cool that's a cool car. Yeah. Cool choice. You could have had you could have bought an Accord. Right. You could have done a bunch of other stuff, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. I mean, when you do that, you could have done a lot of other stuff, including right. nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That, see, that's the other thing. That's the other Ian lore on this show is that 
so, is that so many times the best thing to do is nothing. And people mm-hmm. have a real fucking hard time doing that. Yeah. yeah. Just do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Ian Cannon for the show. Yeah. Well, thank you. <sighs> yeah. Um, I do want to talk about my experience this last weekend because yes. I, it's, it does tie into car culture a bit. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Is that I had an experience that was like tangential to what we experience at car meets and okay. track days and that sort of stuff. I did the record show. Yes. With our, with our buddy, Mike. Yeah. Um, the Rocky mountain uh, record show. It was so much fun. Okay. Um, it was, it was a, an experience a lot like you get at car meets where at least for me, I always feel like oh, I don't know that much about car, like whenever I'm in the presence of car people, uh huh. Before I start talking to people, I'm always like, uh, I don't know that much about cars. I'm a shit mechanic. Like all the things that I worry about. Okay. You know, okay. Kind of what I kind of what I think about. But then you end up just standing around talking to people who are passionate about the same thing that you are. Okay. Yeah. For two days, and you're like, oh yeah, this is just fun. Okay. Like just, people are excited to talk to somebody else. Yeah. Who knows some of the same things that they know. <laughs> right. Right. That, that has you know? like open ways of connecting. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. On the same like pathways. Right. The same like, yeah, the same language. Yeah. Right. And it was great. Like, cause I just stood there while well, people leaf through my, so I, I brought like a small piece of my collection to sell yep. and Mike brought a, Oh, I've sold the rest. You didn't see me at that booth down there. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Mike was a, a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Mike brought a piece of his too. Uh-huh. And you know, people would like pause at a record. Yeah. Yeah. They'd like you because they're flipping. Their, That's the their, thing. Their, the pause, like at a car show, stopping in front of one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. And, it, and with record? records, okay. it's you're going through the bin yeah. and you pause at something and you're like, either you're like, what the fuck is that? Right. Right. Or you're like, Ooh, Ooh, you know? that. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, they'll, or they'll, like they'll take it out and look yeah. at it. And so I'll, I would see someone pause at something and I'd be like, Oh, well, here's the story of like, where I bought it or, you know, why I am selling it or why I love this record or whatever. Yeah. And it was, it was really cool. Like it was really fun um, to just talk to other enthusiasts. Yeah. Just like you do at a, at a car show. Yeah. Um, So yeah, it was, it was a ton of fun. I'm excited to do it again next year. Maybe I've always been hesitant to sell things Uh to sell my my records um because i feel like once they're gone they're gone yeah um but the experience of selling them was so much fun that like now i'm like well what else can i what else whoa can I okay yeah it okay. was it was more fun than i thought it was gonna be wow to sell stuff off and i only have seller's remorse about a couple of records okay okay yeah. there's many- uh i sold uh, so I sold 30, oh, okay. 30 some records. Uh huh. I, I had only brought 50. Yeah. Um, I brought 55, I think. And I sold 35. I think. That's amazing. Yeah. I sold quite a, quite a yeah. bit. Um, I have seller's remorse about a couple. Okay. Uh, I sold a love and rockets record that I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to miss that one. Okay. Um, and then I sold a, um, a, a UK press of a Velvet Underground record that I really like. Okay. Um, but I had two copies of it and I kept the repress, like a newer repress. Okay. Uh, and sold the more valuable UK press. And I'm now wondering if I should have done the opposite. <laughs> that seems like it has a weird like a cool you... cover and the whole thing. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. That seems like a weird move for you to sell the OG one. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, when I was. I was packing the house and yeah, you know, cause we we're kind of moving out and it was like, I was like, well, I've got to get rid of some stuff. And sure. I went through that section first okay. and I was more aggressive with that section. 
Oh, um, like things you have duplicates of or like that genre? What What's this? No, section? no, no. That section of the alphabet. I started from that side of the uh, room and moved, oh, moved to the other side of the room. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you were much more motivated at the beginning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I was like, oh, but I love this record towards the, so like towards yeah. the A's and B's, I was like, oh, you kept oh, everything. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> That's hilarious that like it changed as you went. Yeah. Right to left. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, okay. How many did you come? How many did you come home with? I only traded. So I, so there were things, this is a a fun one is that, so my friend, Mike, who we've talked about on the show before, I featured as like our uh, album the week before pop sloppy. Yeah. Yep. He, uh, he and I do vinyl night together. We kind of, he hosts it usually. Um, but um, he and I do this thing where we'll, we'll trade records sometimes. Uh-huh. And what usually happens is he is very motivated to trade. Okay. And I'm like, are you sure? Because this seems like a much better trade for me than it does for you. And he's like, yes, I don't need this. I want it out of my house. Okay. I don't want it anymore. Yep. And then almost every single time bar once um, because I, it's going to have to be pride for my cold dead hands. Uh, he uh, ends up with the record back in his house. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so he had um, a, uh, a Sonny Rollins record, which is a, a little jazz. Record, yeah. Right. He bought from wax tracks here in Denver. Yeah. Um, legendary record store. And, also same lineage as this as the legendary uh, record label in Chicago out of Chicago. Um, he had bought this, this Sonny Rollins record for like $3 in 2003. Oh. And you know that because it has the sticker on it Yeah, and they date, they date their price tags. And okay. Uh, so he bought it for $3. I was going to, he had traded me for that record for something in my collection a while back. I don't remember what it was. And I listened to it. And I enjoyed it. And I was like, just kind of thinning out my jazz records. And I was like, well, this might be a good one to sell. Yeah. And I looked it up and I did some more research on it. And it turned out that it was an original U S pressing of that. Okay. Yeah. And it was worth, you know, 50 bucks, 50, okay. 60 bucks. Yeah. And so I was selling it for 40. Okay. Okay. And he was like, Ooh, <laughs> I need that. <laughs> and so he ended up trading that. That's what I, that's how I ended up with the roots record. That you oh, the phrenology record. Yeah. Okay. The phrenology record. Uh huh. Um, so that's how that happened was that I was trading him back this Sonny Rollins record, which turns out to be quite valuable. Yeah. Back. And so it was going back home. I like that. That's, that's the story. But very full circle. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I also got a copy from him. I traded him something else. I don't remember what it was. Oh, an old prog record, an old prog rock record for um uh music to love to uh for uh, to uh make love to your old lady by. The Lovage album. Yeah. The Lovage yeah, Dan album. the Automator, Mike Patton, yes. yeah, yeah, Prince Paul. Yeah. It's a really cool like blue color vinyl repress. Yep which yeah. I am psyched about. Yeah. Uh, that is a wonderful that. album. Yeah. 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 Prince Paul. He, Prince Paul is the, uh, the key stinger of hip hop producers. Yeah. I like that. Well, actually I should, I, what is more, what is way more underrated than a Kia stinger? Because Prince Paul is, I think one of the most underrated individuals in hip hop of all time. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Amazing album. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. Okay. Well, good job at the record show, Ian. Way to get rid of some stuff, buddy. Yeah. 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 It went well. Yeah. That's awesome. Did you end up going on Sunday doing a second day? We did. We did. Yeah. We, yeah. I had so much fun on Saturday. I was like, let's come back. And I ended up selling a ton of stuff on Sunday. Nice. And actually we had people who came and found us on Sunday because they said their friend said that we had good stuff at good prices. Cause a lot of the other yeah. tables were selling stuff at like outrageous plus prices. prices. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, there was like, um, Mike was saying that he was looking, he had, he was like, I'm going to hope, I'm hoping to find this particular Smith's record. Okay. That sure. He was missing from his collection. Yeah. And he found it at the record show for like, like $150. Oh God. Which was just like insane for a Smith's record. First of all, you're going to be insanely sad because you're listening to the Smiths. Second right. of all, you're going to be even more sad because you're, you're on 150 you're bucks. Broke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he ended up like, he was like, so I made a couple deals and then I went home and I s- bought it on Discogs for half price. See, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Oh. Right. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. You went back the second day. Yeah. yeah. And I like that yeah, you guys we had like cachet. Like, yeah, you were the guy that somebody knew. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was very funny too to like to bring back to cars too. Of like, there are like the subgenres, right? Uh-huh. Of like the people at the car meets who only hone in on like muscle cars or yes. whatever, yep. right? And I feel like um, the metal guys, mm-hmm. the metal people, the people who are fans of metal would yep. hone in if we put so mike had bought a stand uh-huh. and so we kind of rotated kind of played with different combinations to, to draw have, them in yeah we uh-huh. both have very eclectic collections yeah, yeah. and we tell people when they come up like oh this is aggressively unsorted so you're okay. gonna have to like look you're it. gonna have to look at everything yeah i yeah. like that yeah and so we were kind of playing with different things facing out uh-huh. and like the metal things in particular, people would like clock it uh-huh. and be like, well, now we got to check everything out. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whereas I think the people with more eclectic takes tastes were just looking at everything. They were looking right. at. Yeah. They were it's looking just at overstimulated. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. But there were definitely people who were like, I am going to look for one thing. Yes. There was a guy who came up and asked us if we had any Toad the Wet Sprocket. Oh, okay. And he was wearing a Toad the Wet Sprocket t-shirt. Okay. A completist. It was like his thing. His thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I can't help you. Right. But Godspeed, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a weird band to be as your favorite, to have yeah. as your favorite. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Yeah. yeah. Right? It'd be like, do you have a Ford Tempo? You're right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're like, I respect it. I respect that yeah. you have a thing that you're passionate about, but her? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, yeah. We're not going to yuck anybody's yum, but hey, you do you. Tell the yeah. West Brocket guy, I hope, I hope you find it. Yeah. 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 I, from working in the music store when I worked there, like, you know, 96 to 2000, um, I never heard a, like a genre fan base, uh, talk about whether or not their genre was dead or not more than metal guys. Right. They were concerned, like nobody else is concerned with the status the longevity, the livelihood of their right. genre than metal guys, in my opinion. Which is funny because that conversation has been happening for metal guys for like 40 years. Yes, 40 years. Yes. No, you're exactly right. Right. But it shows yep. like the navel gazing like and focus, which would draw sure. like, yeah, right. Like somebody clocking like one of your Black Sabbath LPs from yeah. across the room and then being just like, I'm going over here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And there's metal that I love. I love the sword. I love red fang, you know, like there's a lot of metal that lines up with a lot of folks. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I have a hard time with a lot of it to be honest, but like, yeah, it's, it is very funny that metal fans seem to be less like they seem to be less, uh, interested in like the unsorted sort of approach yes. right? where there yes. might be metal records hiding and mike actually had a handful of metal records sure sure um because he likes metal yeah but like 
but other i think fans of other music whose like primary genres might be something else were more right. willing to kind of sort through things and i think the same thing ho- holds for cars right where i think like there are certain subcultures who are like if you don't tell me that this is a muscle car meet then i'm not going Right, right, right. right. Not to say that that metal guys are muscle car guys, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right, right. But you're exactly right. Like that laser focus, right? Right. Yeah. Like if if there's a chance that there won't be a GTO there, then I'm not interested. Right. You know, like that's a weird way to go about it. Yes. Yes. Right. Because I feel like the discovery is the joy of it. Yeah. Creek digging and. That's you know. exactly why you go to things like this. This is exactly why there still are record stores is because the joy of finding it in person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Community and the like, joy of finding it. What the fuck is person. this? I'm buying it. And then that first like. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Or like you know first, what like, it is and you're like, in holy a, in a new shit. Car. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe I found it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Ian. Do you, yes. do you have an album that is new to you that you picked up at the show that you is the album of the week? Or do you have an album of the week ready for us? I have an album of the week. It okay. is not new. Okay. Um, it is um, uh, the first album by The Walkmen, who okay. is a band that I love. I believe I've featured them before on... Yes. Out for the week. But I've I've kind of recently revisited their their very first record, which is called Everyone Who Pretended to Like Me Is Gone. Yeah. Uh from 2002. Okay. Um and uh yeah, it's just man, I I I feel like there should be justice for the Walkmen. Like they should have been the biggest band of this scene. Okay. Uh, they're the most like kind of adventurous. And I mean, that album cover is amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Smoking, <laughs> cigarette like, smoking children. Yeah. Like newsy looking children. kids. Uh, yeah. There's a song in here called wake up that I have just been playing nonstop to myself. Okay. Um, it's just such a banger. Um, they just do like such weird shit with like syncopated p- pianos and all sorts of stuff. Um, when they were like 20 years old. So okay. yeah, this album's awesome. Okay. Just classic indie rock revival, sort of New York scene, uh, even though they're from DC, but that's okay. Okay. Anyway, the Walkmen are the best. No good music ever came out of DC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Certainly nothing in the rock genre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Right on. Well, I will check this out. I could, I could use a good rock album. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. weird. It's a weird, it's a weird rock album. I will, I will. That's you okay. That. I'll get it's weird. It's mellow in parts. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really great. And I, again, like wake up is, is, uh, a, is awesome. Um, we've been had is a, an amazing song. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the other one that's really great on this one? They're winning. the The opening track is great too. Um, yeah, it's oh. it's a good album. Nice, dude. Nice. Okay. Links to. I mean, did the Walkman have a band camp? If they do, band right. camp. If it's if it's a legit band camp, Apple Music, Spotify will be in the YouTube description to this album. They're uh, opening for Idols this. Uh, oh shit! Okay. This summer in New York. Uh, oh. So if you, you can make it there. Wow. They've been on the Walkman have been on hiatus for like 10 years and okay. they did a, a bunch of reunion shows last year, which I got Hell to go yeah. see one. Um, and it was amazing. Nice. And they're still doing a couple. So okay. if you have a chance to see them. Yeah. They're great live. Hell yeah. Nice dude. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I love it. Very thankful when a band I like reunites, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah, I hope they. I hope they release a new album. Absolutely, nice dude. Willing okay, it, willing it into existence. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, listen to that for sure. Um, text, um Texas vanity plates, Texas weird Kia Stinger plates. Yeah, seven two zero five one five one three nine one. Better yet, send them to Ian over on Instagram in the DMs. I uh, would like to call out 
when this episode drops, it's going to be the episode that is online, the most recent episode that uh, that folks that are co- maybe coming to visit us because they heard you and I, Ian, on the Flag Time podcast. Oh, is that coming out? That's coming out. Yep. Yeah. Serrated yeah. was uh, talking about how difficult I made it for him by providing audio, our own audio um, <laughs> <laughs> for for us. But yeah, it, um, but it's going to sound great. Uh, I love what he does with the show. He's a great editor. So um, yeah, we're, we we were honored to be guests on the Flag Time podcast with Serrated and Sterling and Pixie. And uh, we had a bananas time. Um, yeah. So yeah, so check check out Flag Time. Support their Patreon. I'm a member. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll be the one that's on the Discord chopping it up with you, Flag Time weirdos. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. When you see, well, thank like, thank you, it, and and we're yeah. sorry for finding you this. Yeah. Concept. If I just all caps drop Sob Vigan into the Discord for the Flag Time podcast, it's this dude right here. It's this guy. Yeah this guy yeah right. i like that you knew that we were gonna get new listeners this week uh-huh. uh from a guest show and you were like i know let's open with prostate exam. yeah let's open with someone else's finger in my ass yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i love I, I that was not ironic i love that you that. that's amazing <laughs> also if you're concerned about your health at all yeah get checked yeah. 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 Yep. So there you go. Yep. Text us your vanity plates. Yeah. Email us. We're on the socials apex adjacent. You know how to do this. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We love you. Goodbye. <laughs>